Let's have a look at a 1928 Wurlitzer. Hello, welcome back. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever or whoever you are. Spring is in the air in March 2024 in the UK, but it won't last. Don't worry, snow will come soon, no doubt. This week's quite an interesting one. A couple of weeks ago, I was invited down to a place in West Wales called Tawin. And the job there really was for myself to install some chassis into some pr 40 some amplifiers into some pr 40s and then do a runner just before the soldering iron comes out so that amanda could do the clever business of uh, putting in these restored chassis and then working out some way of uh, rigging up some reverb the original reverb wasn't working and it was for a concert that evening which is pretty cool there was a uh, an A100 there, which is very nice. A pair of PR40s, as I said. A piano, which I'll explain and show you a bit later on, because it was a weird kind of piano, because it was it was a player piano. It was automatically played, but it was generating the, the noise there. It was a grand piano, and the keys were moving all on their own. But it was played by the Wurlitzer, and this, there was this huge Wurlitzer. It's a Granada... I've got to remember it right now. Granada 2, I think it was, 1928 Wurlitzer. And I was lucky enough, really, to be able to meet the guy, David Lowe, who was playing it that evening. And it had been brought over and restored and put into this place quite a while back. Have a look at it. And he gave me a little bit of an interview, which was fantastic. So I really enjoyed learning about something I knew nothing about. And then I was taken around the back into a different room where all the bits are. And, and if you don't know about Wurlitzers, and I didn't really... Uh, if you play, if you press a drum sound or press play a drum sound or something, there's a real drum in the back that's playing and a cymbal and oboes and bits and bobs and there's a glockenspiel in the air when you're playing on the keys. You play a glockenspiel thing. It plays a bloody glockenspiel. It, it's incredible. Uh, for for when it was 1928, the, the mechanics and the pneumatics are just amazing. Uh, so I thought you might find that really interesting. As an organ player, you know, I used to listen to uh, Ogden on the on the organ on Radio God. I want to say it's Radio 4, I guess. Uh, the Hammond organ and theatre organs. And there's something amazing about a theatre organ sound with a load of reverb. So whilst, uh, whilst the tricky business of soldering was being done and other bits and bobs, I was having a chat to David Lowe, who was performing that evening in Tarim. And just really getting to know him and getting to know the organ and the presets. I thought it was really fascinating. Hopefully you do too. Uh, let's have a bit of a look and I'll see you at the end for a bit of waffle. Yeah. I can have a look at it. Yeah, it's a Brilliant. And how old is this? Well, um, it's, uh, 1936. Wow. Um, and it goes on. And that's the same again over there. More, more, yeah, like, more pipes and bits. Right round to the other side. Look at it. Right to the other side. Come on, then I'll do that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Let me take my drink. <coughs> Avoid everything if I can. Robert Hood Jones, who invented these things, yeah. was actually one of the first telephone engineers. Really? So, a lot of this technology is the same as early telephone technology. That's crazy. Oh, okay. Where are we going? Down there. Mm. Oh. Uh, Hello. We just want to get it out of the way. So. Yeah. Uh, Don't mind me. Just doing some filming. Let me know if you need. Let me know if you need a hand. Just in case. a long way. <laughs> yes. Well, very battered. Oh, it's flying. Looks lovely. I just did. I Cheers. Yeah. 
Well, you can. Oh, but you can't get it made new. You could. Oh, wow. This is where the console normally lives. Oh, I see. <laughs> Turn you in. That's how you get the. Uh, yeah, yeah. Wow. All bikes. <laughs> yes, so it is. Uh, you're a bit thinner than me, aren't you? <laughs> oh my lord, right, this, this is what's called the relay. Yeah. Which effectively, uh, in modern parlance, it's the computer that looks after it all. Oh, right. Except there's no electronics whatsoever. Um, Good lord. Now, because it predates semiconductor diodes and the like, yeah. one, one of the problems is preventing things in connect, uh, connecting together that you don't want to connect together. Right, keep them apart, yeah. Yeah, so because of that, every circuit has to have two separate contacts in it. Right. What One of them relates to the selection of the stop. So these, yeah. these are the stop relays. Ah, yeah, yeah. Which will be at least 64 away. <laughs> so they're massive relays. Yeah, yeah. And they're um, electro-pneumatic. When you operate the, the stop key on the console, yeah. it operates a little um, solenoid that starts off a sequence of valves, which if you find one, I might go to find an example. Oh, right. That's one thing that wasn't what I was looking for. Huh. That's clever. Not what, exactly what I was looking for, really. I was looking for um, one of the uh, stops without finding one of them. And everything's moving, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It's just this. <coughs> but I can't really show you what, um, <laughs> what happens is um, they're connected to levers that you'd see if you can see if you look at the Right. Oh, what a time to get a shoelace undone. Oh. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right. Sure yeah. <laughs> Can you see all the rods? Oh, yeah. So the rods go down to the pneumatics. Yeah. The pneumatics are the end phase of what starts from the solenoid. Okay. That rod pulls, that tilts the cone, yeah. the stop relay, and that makes gives it connection to the actual pipes. Blimey. That's so old school, isn't it? Yeah. I so love that, it. So that's the first stage oh. contact, if you like. Yeah. Then down in the bottom Good. here, mm -hmm. you've got what are known as key relays. Down here. This is what was underneath, what you're looking yeah. at. Yeah. If you look at this side, then you'd need to have a, a light on to see it. Oh, right. Uh, because you've, you've got glass this side. And, oh. Uh, ah. Ah. Well, we really are in the bow in the bowels of this, aren't we? Yeah, Good yeah. lord! Yeah. Oh yes, I see. So these are the key relays. So each time you press a key, yeah, a relay here will operate. Yeah, you've then got a serious connection from the key relay, the stop relay, to the actual pipe that we play. That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. One of the uh, God, us. Yeah. Uh, these parts at the back are the diaphonic diapasons. I'm sorry, say that again. Diaphonic what? Diapasons. But the, the diaphone was another Robert Hook Jones invention. Right. It's neither a flute or a reed. <laughs> it's, it's like a vibrant flame. I've seen it as a, as a setting before. That's all I've seen it as. So, in this context, oh, so it's meant to be making a church organ type sound. Oh, right. Does that sound like anything else to you? No, it's that because little soup, isn't it, that's making... The, the invention of the diaphone was used for one other thing, which was light out, light out fog horns. Yes, yes. It yeah. does sound like a fog horn, more than anything else. Well, it's the same technology. <laughs> um, well, I'll have to... I'll also, have to... what is the, uh, the thing you get up above you, a bit like a xylophone, but... Uh... Oh, yeah. Jeez. 
That's superb. Yeah. Well, I'm going to see if I can have a play of it later on, if, yeah. uh, if you'll let me. Absolutely. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Oh, it's a bit tight here. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm a good well, this organ was built in 1937 by Willits and installed. Uh, it was shipped across to the UK and installed in the Canal of Woolwich, and uh, it was used for organ interludes and broadcasts. And uh, was one of, you know, one of Granada's uh, Willits uh, organs that they yeah. had quite a few of. And I, I first played this in 1968. When really? I, when I played the organ at the Granada Woolwich on Saturday nights. Uh, by then, it was a bingo. So it's amazing that I then was reacquainted with it all those years later. Here yeah. It's installed in Nive Pendry about, well, it's been nearly 20 years ago. Uh, so the organ originally had eight, eight, eight stops or eight ranks of pipes, eight sets of pipes. So a, the, the trumpet, the diapase, the tibia clarinet, yeah. a couple of strings, flute and vox. And then to make the organ more versatile, John Smallwood added an orchestral oboe, uh, which he got from the States. And, uh, and that, that's nice because it, it it enables you to put a little bit of edge on a on a registration like like this. No. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Not that. If you take the elbow out. Oh yeah. Little or, scratchy, really bit. Yeah. Or in a foolish combination with the um, the tremulous and so on, it gives you quite a nice rich, especially. Uh, tenor G is very nice, so that's without it. If I did. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. Gives it, it an edge, doesn't it's it? Subtle. It's subtle, but it's there. Yeah. Well, it's a pipe was really top class. Uh, well, uh, when Robert Hope Jones emigrated to the States in the 18, eight, eight, about 1890, I think, uh, he took with him some of the top organ men from this country. Right. And, and so the pipework that Willis produced was of, of the finest, particularly the reeds. Um, but I mean, uh, some of the flues are absolutely fabulous. The, the, the tibia, for example, which was supposedly made from a special wood, which you can't get now. Oh, really? um, uh, let's do it without that. Robert Hope Jones's idea wasn't really that that should be a solo stop, but one that you would use to add colour to, to uh, combinations. Yeah. So you might, for example, put the Vox Humana with it, um, just at the eight foot pitch. And it works, well, it's a Vox Humana, it's astonishing. Uh, Bradford Cathedral Organ has just had a Vox Humana added. Yeah. And the organist used it the other day to recital, and he had the tremolo going. And afterwards he said, what do you think of our Vox? I said, well, it's very nice, but it's, it's nowhere near as good as Wurlitzer. So. <laughs> the Wurlitzer Vox is astonishing, the way it changes character with and without the tremolant. You, you would hardly ever want to use it without. Yeah. But as soon, oh, yeah. But as soon as you put the tremolant on, what a difference. Totally different. Yeah. So, added in with the tibia, it's... Oops. Or you can have strings a little bit of tibia right at the top, and you get what we call mist. Oh, yeah. And then we've got... A, well, the <laughs> planets are really nice. They're not solo stops, but... Beautiful. And John, the owner, is very particular, so when I tune the clarinet, I always make sure that every note is similar in quality and tone and yeah, volume tone, with the right. next one yeah it's the only it's the only rank where we go through it sometimes afterwards oh so so around in the back then there's a few clarinets that are linking up to to make the uh make all the octaves is there yeah we've got you've got 61 pipes in there which are clarinet right which i tune oh and you've got, there's about getting on for a thousand pipes back there not quite but that way and they've got some lovely strings for the celeste you know. oh yeah four foots so you've got the string on the celeste with it yeah and that's really really nice uh dab basin is what you'd expect on a church organ of yeah. course 
And then we got the French, the um, trumpet. I know they said French trumpet, but it isn't. Uh -huh. It's called a style D trumpet because the, the words of style Ds had them. And the trumpet is quite lyrical. So without the tremolant, it, it's quite useful. It, it's it's not aggressive. Mm -hmm. I, I've actually loudened it as far as it'll go. Yeah. So if you put the tremolant on, that's really lyrical. Yeah. And again, the trick is to make sure that everyone takes the tremolo at the same. Yes. And you can use that actually just on it on its on its own, or maybe with a little bit of tibia at four foot. Beautiful, thank and of course you. you could use it in bigger combinations as well. You can take all the tremolance off and add it to some of the other stops that work and, and, and get a fairly good sort of straightish sound, you know. Yeah. When it's tuned. <laughs> Church of, um, oh, I know, I know. Although Wurlitzers were installed in churches, but that wasn't the big market. The big market for Wurlitzers was purely pure chance, and that was when the first Wurlitzer organs were being produced in 1910. There was a demand for organs to cinemas, yeah, to come to silent films. Yeah. It wasn't planned. People say, Oh, yes, a Wurlitzer organ designed to come to silent films. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. It was designed to be an orchestral instrument that could be installed in skating rinks, yeah. ballrooms, hotels public halls like this. It just happened to work in, in that it environment. just happened to work. So I think it was the fifth Willitzer that was installed in a cinema, Court, New, uh, Court Cinema in Chicago, I think. And it was so successful. Yeah, it took, just took it, off. It took off. And so, and of course, other organ builders started building these orchestral instruments as well. High pressure, yeah. lots of orchestral voices. We'd, we'd, if it was electronic organ, we'd say voice, wouldn't we? Yeah, and, uh, you would say draw bar setting. Oh, you would say draw bar. <laughs> four, six, four, six, nine, two, one. <laughs> um, and, and the other thing is that this organ's only got nine sets of pipes. So in church organ terms, it's tiny. Yes. You, the giant works for organ never existed. That was just hype. Well, oh, it's a big sound because we're on, we're on wind pressures of five times or more greater than a church organ. Right. So in water gauge, the church organ will be on two inch. Yes. We are on six inch for the for the box, ten inch for the rest. Okay. But actually, some instruments you're on fifteen. Wow. I'm not saying church organs are never at that pressure. That you know you might yeah. have a tuba that is. Yeah. But for the most part, so you get a lot of bang for your buck. Amazing. Um, so basically, you you've got you've got regulators for different pressures, different ranks of pipes. That's absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and and the other the other difference with the church organ is not only the fact that these instruments are highly orchestral. But they're usually placed in two chambers, which are enclosed. Yeah. Which is would be, I only know of one church style organ that's completely enclosed. That's way for people, um, and that's because it's installed by Compton's, uh, sort of along theatre organ lines. Yeah. To a small degree, but normally church organs are enclosed with a section in the swell box. But Ho Jones's idea was that because you are conducting an orchestra, you need to build a, like, you know, yeah, like check. So the whole organ, almost always, almost always, the whole organ is in, in this case, two chambers, which is quite normal. Right. And instead of three three keyboards being three different sections of the organ, the whole of the organ is distributed amongst the three. Yeah. So you could play an eight-foot tibia on that manual, on that manual, and, well, if that was a full solo, you... Yeah. On that one. Actually, this is more there for show, actually. <laughs> or you could play off the top manual, which is called manual three, is the piano, xylophone, glockenspiel, and crystal block, and you can couple up. Yes. 
So whatever you've got on here, at the trumpet, you could play it there. Ah. By coupling it up. Oh, right. It's not mega useful. But what, no. what is nice is you can do that. Um, oh, that's terrific. And again, you see, these organs were company, uh, were installed and they, they had silent film effects. I would argue they didn't have silent film effects. Mm. They came with the effects that a light music orchestra would have. Yes. Which were ideal for silent films. Exactly. Not the same thing. And that's why they took it, it amounted to the same thing. Oh, but, right. um, this one doesn't have too many silent film effects, but what we've got. Excellent. Uh, we'd say steam train, but it's actually a boat whistle. Uh -huh. That's a fire gun, I think. Ah. I've, never, I've never heard anybody use the horsey suits. And then... Bird, of course. Yeah. Um, and surf. <laughs> now, the surf. Surf is escaping wind, and we all have that problem. Hey! Um, <laughs> and then you've got your tonal percussions, which I've already demonstrated. There's a the yeah. phone. Chimes. Um, and Chris, the crisp got very nice, like a Celesta. Yes, yeah. It's a particularly good one on this organ, and you can make that into a vibraphone if it works. Yeah, a bit fast. Beautiful, but... beautiful. Right. Amazing, isn't it? Thanks so much for the demo. I really You're appreciate right? it. Thank well. you. those for the moment okay right great uh, solo and uh, great solo yeah first one add the eight strings on the flute and then the, the other two off that are on and then we're going to duplicate that on four. Oh, yeah yeah Pick a little off.
welcome back. Well, what did you think of that? Wasn't that amazing? It was kind of, I just left the camera running, you know, and, and try and piece together all the bits of footage that I put together because I thought it was so fascinating for you to see. Some of the wiring may be a little bit obscured, but, you know, suffice to say, there is a lot of wiring. Uh, did you see the vibrato as well the, the 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 box that's literally shaking and it's just and that's what's creating the vibrato sound fascinating stuff i don't know in the video um if it was no i think it was after the, i was recording the video you can also play a melody whilst holding your fingers down it's like after touch so you can hold a chord down and then push 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 a bit more and it'll do 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 whilst holding the chord down so just sort of flexing your muscles really absolutely ahead of its time An amazing game-changing instrument it was fascinating to talk to uh david Lowe. it was and his his friend showed me around as well amazing we got everything working in the end and managed to get back so it was a sort of a six hour six hours worth of driving for me and uh three or four hours in the building but it was all done and fixed and they had a successful performance that evening and i re really enjoyed the the whole experience it was wonderful i hope you found that video slightly interesting um if you did you're welcome to buy me a cup of coffee a cup of tea or something over on my patreon at nick foley uk and subscribe there you'll also get as a as a favor to me as a present back you'll also get all these videos uh, in advance of the youtube people so uh you've already seen it if you're a patreon you've already seen this you know exactly what i'm going to say now because i've already said it and you've already seen it but if you're on youtube you're getting this a little bit later and that's how it goes so Thank you very much. Thanks for your time. Hope you enjoy this one. It's a special one for me, and there's a lot of effort uh, taken to get this to get this over to you. So I hope it's been enjoyable. Normal service will be resumed, no doubt, on the Hammond organ next week. I'll speak to you later. Thank you. Bye.